And to kick off, we've got Jacob, who is a local ATX DAO member uh, from Austin here, and he's also a Filecoin IPFS enthusiast, and he's also a Web2 game developer who has uh, taken the red pill and gone full Web3. So uh, really excited to hear from Jacob here. So take it away. Thank you. OK, um, good evening, everybody. Hope you're all having a good day. So today we're going to talk about how decentralized storage will, it says affect, but I will say disrupt gaming. Um, the future is now. Um, so with decentralized storage, generally, let me get to that. So a little bit more about me. I uh, started off with Web2 two de web two game development, just very classic game development in terms of Web3. Um, and then I kind of took a dive into Web3 gaming, working at Deep Space, uh, connecting to the blockchain, grabbing assets from there, and pulling it into your video game, which back in around 2020 was a pretty difficult thing to do. There wasn't even any sort of MetaMask integrations into most game engines. Um, and there were a lot of workarounds that needed to be done. Um, what else I've done, I'm a prominent member of the ATX DAO here in Austin. Uh, I work at Change Gallery, specifically doing a lot of work with IPFS publishing. Um, we host a lot of NFTs through there. Uh, I worked at Project Bankman, uh, making the Bill Murray NFT collection, again, also through IPFS. Uh, and then Zero Proxy, which is a startup idea um, that I'm working on as well. So that is me. So let's go into the current Web2 landscape for video games. Um, who here has heard of Fortnite? Good number, of course. Um, who here has heard of Counter-Strike? Two different yet similar games um, built by two completely different companies. And every time in the current Web2 landscape, when you create a video game, usually it's starting completely from scratch and there is no overlap between any two games, unless you're from the same company. Um, and so that causes a lot of development time, and that causes a lot of features to be cut, and many more issues which will be explained on the next screen, and will be fixed by decentralized storage. So if we look at Fortnite today, it has gun skins, and character skins. You're able to customize your character and your guns, and these are all done through normal Web2 technology. You got a database somewhere at Epic Games, which are the creators of Fortnite. And in those databases holds these assets. Nobody has access to these assets except for Fortnite. Um, Fortnite also has an in-game shop where you can buy these skins. Again, it's a closed ecosystem. Now, with Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you can see some overlap here between game ideas where it also has gun skins. Um, and it also, uniquely from Fortnite, has a secondary marketplace where you can, you can buy and sell to other people these skins. And Fortnite does not have that secondary marketplace presumably due to, due to development time or some other reason. And so Counter-Strike also, if you see in the bottom right-hand corner, those are your current available character skins in the game. But when we introduce Web3, you can have any Fortnite character in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So let me go a bit more into detail about that. So this is a bit text heavy, but I'll try to explain it. So if we implement Web3 into all of this, the main thing is, of course, you get your assets from decentralized storage. And what that brings is cross-game compatibility 
if we get back to the previous slide real quick. Remember how I talked about Counter-Strike doesn't have character skins. With decentralized storage in play, it would be very simple to bring those skins into virtually any game imaginable using the same exact systems, and I'll have a live example of that later on. So, what else does it do? There is no need for internal storage for assets. Remember how I talked about the database existing at Epic Games? That is not needed since now everything is stored on the blockchain or through IPFS. And they also last in perpetuity. That's just the nature of the blockchain and decentralized storage, right? If the game goes down, the game servers go down, you don't lose your NFTs, you don't lose your assets. They belong in your MetaMask wallet or wherever you're currently holding them. Um, then the other thing is the standardized way of retrieving assets. In my live example going forward, um, coming up, they use the same exact code to load the assets in, but how they handle the assets is entirely different. But the whole loading process is exactly the same. And then just talking more on general Web3 implementation advantages, you have like a uni unified login system, you know, MetaMask, you don't have to remember 10 different logins, emails, passwords, all that jazz. That's I'm sure we're all familiar with those concepts now. Same thing with the unified marketplaces like OpenSea and royalties going to the original creators. Um, and the advantages of the login system and the marketplace allows for the shorter development times, right? If, for instance, Counter-Strike, maybe they haven't implemented character skins because they don't have the development time or resources for it. However, in my live example, those, the loading of those assets is all unified. It's all the same code source. And so, yeah, shorter development times. And then both games benefit from each other's creativities. Going back here real quick. If I have my Fortnite skin and I bring it into Counter-Strike and somebody thinks that skin is cool, he can ask me where I get it from. And so not only does it advertise the other game, but it sparks conversations and it sparks interest. And it just allows for a more open conversational e ecosystem, in my opinion. Um, and then it also allows for the, fan, the fans to make, vid make video games and assets and what have you, using all of this. Further expanding the universe and the range of the original games and assets personalities. Um, so a few examples today um, using these philosophies and principles are Drunken Dragon games and Axie Infinity. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Axie Infinity. But Drunken Dragon games, what they're doing is they're creating the main game and the main assets, putting it on decentralized storage, and then putting a very heavy emphasis on the fans and the community to drive the universe forward. And that is only possible through all of this decentralization. And then Axie Infinity is using very much the same concepts, except they're going a more targeted route, where I don't know if you can see them. Uh, they all say Sky Mavis. But what they've done is they've made like a builder's program where you are using the same exact assets, but you're making different video games. And so they have live examples here of se seven or eight games doing exactly this concept. Um, and so it's only a matter of time, it's only a matter of time until Fortnite or Counter-Strike start implementing this. And I hope they do, because it, again, it's just gonna make for a much better ecosystem. So to show this off myself, 
what I have done is you can sc scan this QR code. Um, probably won't work too well on mobile, admittedly. But if you have your MacBook or laptop, you can also go to the website. Um, you can connect your MetaMask wallet. You can, free of charge, with no gas fees required, generate your character and load it into two separate games, Shootout and Jumpy. And so I will, I have some time, so I'll show that. So this is the website. You log in, connect your MetaMask. And so I believe on this account, I already have two characters. I've got Riley and Logan. Um, all the information pertaining to these assets and characters are stored completely on decentralized storage. Um, not coincidentally enough, IPFS storage. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and generate a character. Gotta give it a second. And then give it another second. And so I'll just, while this is going on, um, I can talk a bit more about like the current challenges of like why I don't think this has been implemented to its fullest extent is because one, there's gas fees, which I have solved here. Two, um, you need a MetaMask, which is also very confusing for Web2 people, even still to this point. Um, and then several other things. So, so it loaded now. Um, you can see I got another Logan. And so I got my three characters here, and I'm gonna go ahead and load up Shootout. And so a completely different website, complete different game. I'm gonna load it. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my MetaMask again. And it's a different account. Um, wait, hang on. Okay. So I'm gonna connect my account. It's gonna load from decentralized storage, and you can see I got my Riley and my two Logans. And so, it's, it's just a regular game. And so, that's game one. In that game, what I've done is, I made it so that the game, the asset changes the gameplay. However, that doesn't need to be the case. In Counter-Strike and Fortnite's case, Everything is purely cosmetic. You don't get any sort of advantage. But in Shootout, I made it that way. That's a complete developer option. That is not a requirement of decentralized storage. And so then we go over to Jumpy, the other game. I got my same exact assets. I'm gonna select one, and it's an entirely different game. Yeah. So, I am out of time, so there you go. Thank you for listening.